Welcome to the enchanting world of The Golden Fish, a cherished Slavic folk tale. This timeless story weaves a tale of human nature, ambition, and the consequences of unchecked desires. Set in a coastal village, it follows the journey of a humble fisherman and his wife, whose lives are forever changed by an extraordinary encounter with a magical creature. In a small coastal village, nestled between rolling hills and the vast expanse of the sea, a poor fisherman and his wife lived in a weathered hut. Their home, though modest, stood as a testament to their resilience. Its wooden walls weathered by years of salty winds and harsh winters. The couple's days were simple, filled with the rhythms of fishing and tending to their home. Each morning the fisherman would rise before dawn, the familiar creak of his old bed a signal to begin another day of toil. One crisp autumn morning, as the fisherman cast his net into the shimmering waters, he felt an unusual weight. Pulling with all his might, he discovered a fish unlike any he had seen before. Its scales glimmered with a golden hue, each one catching the light like a precious gem. To his amazement, the fish spoke in a melodious voice that seemed to echo the gentle lapping of the waves. The fish pleaded for its freedom, its eyes conveying a wisdom beyond mortal understanding. In exchange for its release, it promised to grant wishes. The kind-hearted fisherman, moved by a deep-seated compassion and respect for the sea's creatures, released the fish without asking for anything in return. Upon returning home, the scent of his wife's simple vegetable soup filling the air, he shared this wondrous tale. His wife listened intently, her eyes widening with each detail. As the fisherman described the golden scales and the fish's magical promise, a spark ignited in her eyes. She saw this as an opportunity to escape their impoverished life, years of hardship fueling her sudden ambition. With increasing fervor, she insisted he return to the sea to make wishes, her voice rising with excitement and urgency. The fisherman's life had always been intertwined with the sea, its rhythms as familiar to him as his own heartbeat. Each day, he would prepare his weathered boat, mending nets, and checking his simple fishing gear. The decision to free the golden fish was born from a lifetime of respect for the ocean and its creatures. He understood the delicate balance of nature and his place within it. In contrast, his wife's reaction revealed a lifetime of struggles and unfulfilled dreams. Growing up in poverty, she had spent years watching wealthier villagers enjoy comfort she could only imagine. She remembered nights spent huddled for warmth, days when hunger gnawed at her belly, and the constant worry that plagued her parents' faces. The golden fish represented more than just material wealth. It was a chance to finally taste the life she had long envied, to free herself from the shackles of poverty that had bound her since childhood. Her insistence on making wishes wasn't born of mere greed, but from a deep-seated fear of returning to the hunger and hardship of her youth. Each time she saw the fine dresses of the merchant's wife, or heard tales of feasts at the local lord's manor, it reinforced her feelings of inadequacy and longing. The fisherman, torn between his contentment with their simple life and his love for his wife, reluctantly agreed to seek out the golden fish once more. As he walked back to the shore, his footsteps heavy with apprehension, he couldn't help but wonder about the consequences of disturbing the natural order. As the golden fish began to fulfill the wife's wishes, their lives underwent a dramatic transformation. Their humble hut, once a symbol of their modest life together, was replaced by a comfortable cottage. The thatched roof gave way to sturdy tiles, and the drafty walls were transformed into solid warm barriers against the coastal winds. The wife marveled at the soft beds and the abundance of food in their new pantry. But the initial joy of these improvements soon faded, replaced by a desire for even greater luxury. The cottage became a grand mansion, its halls echoing with the sounds of servants bustling about. Fine tapestries adorned the walls, and the aroma of exotic spices filled the air. The wife, once content with her simple dresses, now found herself draped in silks and adorned with glittering jewels. Yet, even this opulence failed to satisfy her growing ambitions. The mansion transformed into a majestic palace, its spires reaching towards the heavens. The wife, once a simple peasant, 
now commanded a retinue of servants who catered to her every whim. She dined on golden plates and slept on beds soft as clouds, surrounded by priceless works of art. With each granted wish, her satisfaction proved fleeting. The initial elation of newfound luxury quickly faded, replaced by a gnawing desire for more. She began to compare herself to nobility, then royalty, always finding someone whose status exceeded her own. The glitter of her jewels seemed to dim in comparison to the crown jewels she had heard tales of, and the grandeur of her palace paled when she thought of the legendary palaces in distant lands. The fisherman watched with growing concern as his once contented wife became consumed by an insatiable appetite for power and prestige. The warmth of their simple life together became a distant memory, replaced by cold formality and constant demands. Their relationship strained under the weight of her ambitions, the easy companionship of their early years giving way to tension and unease. The wife's unchecked greed reached its pinnacle when she demanded to be ruler of the sea itself. No longer content with earthly riches, she sought dominion over the very forces of nature. The fisherman, weary and filled with trepidation, returned to the shore one last time. The familiar path to the sea now felt foreign, each step bringing him closer to a confrontation he dreaded. As he voiced this outrageous request, the once calm sea erupted in fury. Dark clouds gathered overhead, blotting out the sun and casting an ominous shadow over the land. Lightning cracked across the sky, illuminating the turbulent waters in brief, terrifying flashes. Waves crashed violently against the shore, their roar drowning out all other sounds. The golden fish appeared amidst this chaos, its eyes flashing with anger at their boundless avarice. In a single terrible moment, all their ill-gotten gains vanished. The grand palace, with its marble halls and gilded domes, disappeared as if it had never existed. The fine clothes that had adorned them turned to rags, and the servants who had catered to their every need were nowhere to be seen. The fisherman and his wife found themselves back in their old, dilapidated hut. The familiar scents of salt and fish, once a comfort, now seemed to mock their fall from grace. The comfort of their former life now seemed a distant dream, replaced by the harsh reality of their unrestrained greed. As they huddled in their humble home, the sound of the waves a constant reminder of their folly, they began to understand the true value of contentment and the dangers of unchecked ambition. The golden fish has deep roots in Slavic folklore, with variations found throughout Russian, Polish, and Czech traditions. Each retelling reflects the unique landscapes and cultural nuances of its origin, while maintaining the core moral lessons. In Russia, the tale gained particular fame through Alexander Pushkin's poetic retelling, The Tale of the Fisherman and the Fish. Pushkin's version added lyricism and depth to the narrative, infusing it with the rich language and rhythmic structure characteristic of Russian poetry. Polish versions often incorporate elements of their rich maritime history, setting the story along the Baltic coast and imbuing it with details of Polish fishing traditions. The golden fish might be described using terms specific to local species, and the wishes granted often reflect Polish cultural aspirations of the time. Czech retellings, while maintaining the essence of the story, might set it along riverbanks rather than the sea, reflecting the landlocked nature of the country. The fish in these versions might be a freshwater species, and the grandeur described in the wishes granted could be more closely aligned with Central European notions of wealth and power. Despite these regional differences, the story's essence remains consistent a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked ambition and the importance of appreciating what one has. The character of the fisherman, humble and content with his lot in life, serves as a counterpoint to his wife's growing greed, illustrating the contrast between contentment and insatiable desire. The universal appeal of the golden fish is evident in its similarities to stories from other cultures. Elements of the tale can be found in the Brothers Grimm collection, particularly in the story of The Fisherman and His Wife, which shares remarkably similar plot points. In Arabian Nights, tales of genies granting wishes often explore similar themes of greed and its consequences. 
However, the Slavic version stands out with its distinct focus on the sea as a powerful, almost sentient force. This connection to nature, along with the humble fisherman as the protagonist, gives the story a unique flavor that reflects Slavic values and traditions. The sea in this tale is not merely a backdrop, but a character in its own right, capable of both benevolence and wrath. The tale's ability to transcend cultural borders while maintaining its core message speaks to the universality of human desires and the timeless struggle between contentment and ambition. Across cultures and centuries, people have grappled with the question of how much is enough and at what point the pursuit of more becomes destructive. The enduring relevance of the golden fish lies in its ability to prompt reflection on personal values and societal norms. In today's world of constant comparison and material pursuit, the tale serves as a gentle reminder of the potential costs of unchecked ambition. It encourages readers to consider the true sources of happiness and fulfillment, suggesting that contentment might be found in appreciating what one has rather than constantly striving for more. The story also touches on themes of environmental respect and the consequences of attempting to control nature, ideas that resonate strongly in our current era of ecological awareness. The fisherman's initial act of compassion in freeing the fish, contrasted with the later attempt to dominate the sea, highlights the delicate balance between humanity and the natural world. Moreover, the tale explores the dynamics of relationships and how external factors like wealth and status can alter the foundation of a partnership. The transformation of the fisherman's wife from a companion to a demanding overlord serves as a cautionary element about how power can corrupt and change individuals. The Golden Fish continues to captivate audiences across generations, offering a timeless perspective on the delicate balance between aspiration and gratitude. Its simple yet profound message encourages introspection and discussion, making it a valuable tool for teaching values to children and prompting meaningful reflection among adults. In a world often driven by the pursuit of more, this ancient tale reminds us of the wealth to be found in contentment and the importance of recognizing the true treasures in our lives.